Well, very good afternoon to you, and you're welcome once again. Um, this time is good afternoon, Ghana. And this afternoon, I was going to say this morning. <laughs> All right, this afternoon, definitely, definitely, we are still staying in Kumu as we bring you live feed and updates from the place uh, as the various political parties prepare themselves, including independent candidates, you know, prepare themselves to grab the seats that's been left vacant since... Uh, the MP for the area passed away. I mean, in in terms of I'm, I mean, the person in the person of Mr. Baswa. So, uh, especially both the MPP and the NDC have been campaigning rigorously. I know that political parties have been staying there close to about a month or more. You know, doing a lot with the grassroots supporters there. And there's been mixed reactions, mixed feelings, even though it is indeed a stronghold, as they describe it. I always say that no political party owns any seats in this country. But of course, if they hold a seat for quite a long time, maybe it's fair to uh, call it a stronghold of a particular party, even though I don't support it. But it has been a stronghold of the NPP. So uh, there's a strong belief that the NPP... Uh, will grab the seat. But you know, what is different about this time is that the MPP seem to be doing a lot of work in the area to retain the seat, right? So what exactly has changed? What's the MPP, NDC doing differently? And what are the independent candidates who too on board doing? Now the infographics, sorry, uh, info. Uh, the Global Info Analytics has also come out with the latest on uh, the uh, uh, Kumewu constituency, and we'll be going through it to give you the analysis of that. Uh, Mr. Musa Dankwa will be with me in the studio. We'll get through to Abdul Basi to also come through with exactly what the temperature is like in Kumewu. There are still people on the road traveling now from Accra to Kumewu to monitor how the elections will go. We plead with you to be really extremely careful on the road. This, this morning, we had the opportunity to, to speak with the Road Safety Authority on Good Morning Ghana. Updates have come through. The Sprinter buses, the Sprinter buses, let me use this opportunity to plead with you. So the drivers, the organizers, the leaders, please, please talk to your drivers and let's have a safe... I mean, we're already poor. <laughs> we don't want to be poorer or dead. So please, help us help you. Let's take a breather. When we come back, let's have the excitement about Kumu. Well, welcome back to the program. And I, I, I earlier mentioned that we're going to Kumu. So we're looking at it in perspective as the parties, you know, they rounded up their campaigns yesterday. Today is the last day to the election, which is tomorrow. So let's see how the elections will uh, will go, who will be or who will end up becoming the ultimate winner of uh, the seat in Kumeu. Now, Mr. Musa Dankwa is already with me, Executive uh, Director for Global Info Analytics. I will be speaking with Abdul Basit Suleiman, who is the Ashanti Regional Correspondent, already stationed in Kumeu, and will come through with what updates and uh, everything that's going on in the area. Are the people happy with the latest developments from various political parties and what will inform their decision? And so to guide us on that one, Mr. Musa has come through when another poll is conducted. You know that he, apart from the national level of polls, the Global Info Analytics has also been conducting polls on special areas, you know. And what excited me was the controversial constituencies before the NDC primaries. And it was interesting, uh, you know, to see the polls come through that area before the election itself. You're welcome, sir. Good afternoon to you. Thank you. And right. thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. But before we go to um, Kumeu, let's deal with uh, some of the primaries, uh, the results of the NDC that came through. And so I want you to take me through exactly what if you had any surprises? I wouldn't say surprise at all. Um, in the case of Kumbungu, we didn't call the race because it was too close to call. At the end of the poll, uh, Ras, Ras was leading by a single vote. 
So we knew that race could go either way. And there were about 28% of delegates who said uh, they were undecided. No, I, are you on Kumau? No, okay. Are you on Kumau? I, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the ones that came through before Kumau. You said the NDC primaries. Okay. Yes, okay, yes, yes. all right. So we were not surprised at all in the case of uh, Kumbungu. We knew okay. it could be anybody's chance to win, and then the best candidate won the day. Uh, in um, Asawasi, a week or two before the primaries, we said that Muntek was going to win comfortably, and he did comfortably. Same applied to uh, uh, Ningo Pram Pram, where there was serious threat that uh, Sam George could lose his seat. But we knew that he wasn't going to lose the seat. Yeah, I remember you conducted a special one on Ningo Pram Pram. Absolutely. We weren't surprised. In the case of Adenta, we didn't finish the poll. But when we finished the first round of polling, uh, Ramadan was leading in the poll. And from the feed we had from the delegate, we knew he was going to win. But we didn't have data to put it out there. And then we did uh, Keta. Yeah, as well, and we've got to get that to the right. I think all our projections came through. Wow. And for, for those who lost their seat in, in, in the Upper East, mm -hmm. we warned them earlier, months before the primaries, that they were under threat, and mm -hmm. probably they ignored it and they all lost their seat. China well, that, Paga, that includes who? China Paga was, remember China Paga? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. were here, in fact, the week before, yeah. or two before, we mentioned yeah. his name. And then the guy for uh, Krachi East, East mm -hmm. was also on the radar. And then, uh, um, China Paga was on the radar. Before that, I think in January, we caught the guy from Amensi Central on the yeah. same web. And I think they ignored it, and then they were caught uh, by surprise. So you next actually time, called it. What was his response from Amensi Central? I think he, he was in trouble in January. So he, he could have taken that seriously and worked on it, but probably it was too late for him. Mm. Okay. I, I still have, we, we did some on the MPP, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so I think we will be studying how the MPP polls went as they go to their primaries now. Absolutely. Let's see if we can do the comparison. I'm, I'm quite impressed with what I saw, the outcome comparing to your polls that you put together. So thank you for that. Now, let's go to, um, oh, I'm, I'm told that Bassett has joined us. Bassett, can you hear me? Okay, you, you can unmute, Bassett. Yeah, can you hear you? Okay, great. Thank you. Good afternoon to you. Now, um, well, so uh, Kumawu has been the sleeping place now until after tomorrow. We're, we're still there. Now, take us through. Since the last time I spoke with you, what has changed? Well, as you rightly said, uh, Kumawu has been uh, and, and their background for all political watches. Ever since, since last week, a whole lot of political activities has been going on in the Kumau constituency. Even though the final uh, political activities ended yesterday, but right uh, this morning, a whole lot of uh, party weight dignities from both parties, NDC and MPP, have trooped into Kumau, visiting a lot of places, trying to hold a lot of elections. You know, uh, looking at the voting pattern in Kumo, because uh, uh, speaking with most of the residents, uh, most of them are uh, seem to be angry with government because of lack of development in the area. And, you know, because of that, the independent candidate uh, who broke out from the party is gradually gaining ground uh, in the Kumo, all because most of the youth over there believe that uh, the, the government in power is deceiving them. So uh, I interacted with a lot of these youth who indicated to me that they would rather choose the independent candidate over uh, the, the party's candidate, even though they belong to the party. However, uh, you know, almost every person who matters in the MPP is in Kumau right now, as I speak with, with the exception of the president and the vice president who left yesterday. A whole lot of the executives are still there try, trying to uh, ensure that uh, the party wins uh, this election. You know, uh, uh, this by election is very crucial to uh, the, gov the governing party because it's something that would attest to what they've done or what they claim to have done within uh, their term of office. And so, in case they lose this by election, also going to send a signal that uh, 
the people down there are not appreciated, appreciating what they've done so far. So it's something that uh, a lot of political workers are, have drawn their attention here at Kumo. Over here uh, this afternoon, yeah, you can uh, visually see a lot of people, even though uh, it, it, it's a bit raining over here, but you can see a whole lot of people moving here and there, trying to see what is going to happen, God willing, tomorrow. The IGP was in Kumo since Friday up to now, trying to uh, meet with a whole lot of stakeholders to ensure that uh, they had a peaceful environment uh, before, during, after the by elections, uh, which will be held tomorrow. So, so Abdul, um, there's been quite uh, some controversies concerning comments that's been made by some leaders of um, the MPP, especially like, um, well, Afo, you know, Ashanti region, if you give a person a T-shirt, um, you will get the votes. So one T-shirt, one vote. Uh, there's been comments like if you vote for the NDC, remember that Doomsaw will be back. Um, you know, interesting comments like that. Have you heard any of the Kumeurians <laughs> complaining, you know, about such comments? Or are they cool? Are they, is it normal? Does it resonate with them well? Well, uh, I can say that, you know, it's been now that uh, some kind of development is going on here in Kumeu, uh, a whole lot of even the traditional authorities over there are not happy. And they are not even confident that what is going on will be completed after the by-election. However, even yesterday, the road minister assured them that uh, uh, no matter what, even if whatever happens tomorrow, the road network will still go on because it's something that they plan ahead of even before the MP uh, died. So they, they will ensure that they will complete. The, chief, uh, the paramount chief of Kumo traditional area, Berma Papu Chinibu Akodia, uh, I remember told the road minister and the vice president that he does, and I, I quote him, he doesn't want to believe that they, are, they begin this uh, development just because of by election. If in, indeed it's because of by election, then they will advise themselves come 2024. You know, uh, Kumau, aside being a cultural or traditional uh, area, it also has potential for. Uh, economic potentials over there, like agriculture, you know, a whole lot of vast land at Kumo, which is, has the potential for uh, developing agri and tourism over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, the youth over there, most of them say they don't have work to do and government is unconcerned about their plight. So they believe uh, someone new would come and uh, do something that will help them to I also have some jobs to do over there. So, uh, most, even though they are, they, 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 they youth have different views over who they will vote for, but majority who spoke with me believe a change will help them, even though uh, the seat has always been a safe seat for the new patriotic party. And others, other analysts are also alluding that uh, uh, the former uh, the independent candidates were able to gain about 11,000 votes in the previous election. That's because of uh, the freshness of what happened at that particular moment. And they are not sure you will even get that kind of vote. But looking at the accounts, I'm even sure he will maximize those, uh, God willing, tomorrow. Even if even he will not win, he will maximize his vote. By looking at the LDC candidates, you know, Kumaru is not a stronghold for NDC. And that one, so it will be very difficult for the NDC to show to at Kumo, looking at the environment as we see it now. Uh, right. Uh, uh, maybe a quick one before I, I let you go, because we have another to do in the studio. The, the hospital, this morning I had a report of, you know, the previous administration having built some 10 units of uh, bungalows for hospital workers and the, the hospital itself was not completed it was about 50 something or 40 something percent complete but this government hasn't done anything about it and and i'm told the chief also 
is a doctor who has pleaded a couple of times with the government to help complete the hospital so he personally can work there because he works elsewhere uh, instead of that particular hospital. What can you tell me about that development? Yeah, well, the Kumau government hospital is one of the projects that is so dear to the heart of the people of Kumau. That one I can say for sure. I've had interaction. I even I've visited the chief palace with a lot of dignities. Every dignitary uh, government delegation that comes to the chief palace, the chief will retreat his call on the completion of the hospital. And yesterday, the president visited the hospital. When he, he visited us, he be me before coming to the their background. So uh, the hospital is almost complete, but he left with some uh, few touches. So the entire Kumau community is looking up to the completion of that hospital. It's one of the projects that the previous government is touting themselves with, that they be able to bring this project to the people of Kumau, but left with its finishing such as the current government is reluctant to complete this project. That right. is the major uh, hospital in Kumau, as I think it will right now. And when completed, it's something that is going to help the healthcare delivery of the Kumau, uh, entire Kumau district, of Kumau district. Right. Um, Abdul, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll pause here because uh, we want to analyze the, uh, you know, polls conducted on uh, Kumau by Info, uh, Global Info Analytics. Professor, I'm back to you in the studio. Thank you for your patience. But let's quickly see if we can go through with the minutes that we have left. All right. So, start. Take us through. All right. So when we look at the demography of voters in Kumau that we spoke to over the weekend. Um, first, we looked at 15 out of the 25 electoral areas, the largest being Etia and then uh, Setre and so on and so forth. We went into all these 15 electoral areas. This represents the areas with the highest population of voters in Kumau. Now, of the people we interviewed, 52% were female and 48% were male. Okay. Age groups, above 64, 2%. Between 55 and 64, 5%. 45 and 54, 25%. 35 to 44, 34%. 25 to 34, 28%. And 18 to 24, were seven percent. Okay, so it, it fairly has a higher working youth. class. Yes, working youth. class. Yes, yes, yes. Now, of the sample we interviewed, seven percent had no education, formal education. Tertiary eleven percent, junior high twenty percent, and senior high sixty-two percent. A lot of them senior high graduates. That's a good thing, no? Yes, yes, yes. Very high level of uh, right, graduates right, in right. them, and then. Of the people who we interviewed, zero, none were pensioner. Oh, sorry, it's 0 0.9 were pensioners. Okay, I'm sorry, what was the sample size? 544. Okay, all right. Students were 7.6%, unemployed 33.5%, employed 58%. Not too bad. Not too bad at yes, all. For Kumau. But in that case, 58 point, sorry, 58% 58 of employed. That's almost half the population. Yes. That can take half care of the voters. Of, of the voters, yes. right? Now, now, half of the voters for fifty-eight percent can literally or possibly take care of the other half <laughs> of non-employed. We have students there, uh, seven point six. Yeah. Pensioners zero point nine. So pretty low. A bit of high unemployed unemployment 30. there. Yeah, actually. Yes. Okay. About uh, thirty-three point four percent. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm actually thinking of the sharing of the rights. Bedding. Suspicion <laughs> of sharing of the rights. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, let's look at the party affiliation. This is quite interesting. We are showing the party affiliation in Kumau as at July 2022 and now, May 2023. When we went to Kumau last July, NPP, 19%, surprisingly, in Kumau in July last year. Oh, how? How, yes. NDC, 5%. Floating voters, 74% in Kumau last July. They said last July they were floating voters. They must have been angry at something. And they didn't want to join NDC or any other party, so they, they chose to be in the middle floating voters. Other parties were 2%. Right now in Kumau, 
73 percent are saying they are now MPP. Uh, it was 74 percent floating voters, or there were 16 percent MPP, uh, 19 percent MPP voters in Komowu in July. Hmm? Now, now it is 73 percent. They ran to floating voters in July. Now they've come back. So you can clearly tell the conflicting mindset. There was a conflict mindset. Was, there was tension somewhere in July. I will find out why. So now it kind of reflects the proper party affiliation in Kumbu. Majority is MBP, NDC 9%, 16% floating voters, and 2% other parties in Kumbu. Now, in July, when we went there, 86% of voters said the country was headed in the wrong direction. And 14% said it was headed in the right direction. No opinion, zero in July. But now, right direction in Kumau is 59%, a huge drop from, from 86% to 59%. And then right direction has gone up to 39%. No opinion, 2%. Something has changed within the time frame. What happened? We'll find out why. Now, when we ask them, sorry, this is 2020 parliamentary, parliamentary election. election results. Philip Baswa, the former MP, late, 51.1%. Kwekudia, 40%. Bernard Mafu, NDC, 8.3%. And Nana Amwaku of P uh, Gum, 0.6%. 2020 parliamentary election results. When we ask the Kumo people in last, last July, whether they are going to vote to re-elect their MP. 76% said they are very unlikely or unlikely. And only 26% said they were likely or very likely going to vote for the former MP, the late. So you could see that in July, the MP was in trouble in the constituency. So before his passing. Before he, he's passing away. Now, who would you vote for today in the by-election? After his passing. After his passing away. NSEAO Enim, 56%. Kokudia, 17%. Kusia Mankwa, 12%. Kokudia Junior, 1%. Undecided, 9%. And I will not vote 5%. So this is the current state of the race in Kumo. Uh, did you have, did you have uh, problems asking about Kokudia and Kokudia? No. They, we they, call them senior. They know them very well. They know clearly, them. Very well. Okay. There's no confusion as to who they are. Okay. I'm still waiting for the notice of post Actually, when tomorrow. I mentioned Kokudia, nobody knows this Kokudia, frankly. It's just a non-entity. Yeah. But they still could tell because you want to... I mean, if, if someone... If you ask... Okay, so you ask a question, NS Yao Enim. Yes. And then Kwe Kokudia. Kokudia. You senior. mentioned the names. Yeah, Kokudia. Senior. Openinu. Kokudia. Junior. Kituano. Okay, so that's how they yes. could tell their difference. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. All right. So this is the current state of the race. Now, the actual results may not reflect this because this sample include those who said they will not vote and undecided. And the key here is that what is going to happen in Kumo tomorrow? Are there going to be more people turning out to vote than they said they were? Or these people who said they are undecided, how are they going to break out when they finally decide? Would they decide to vote for Yao Enim or Kukudia or Kusia Mankwa or Kukudia Junior? That will determine the final numbers that you will see on election day. So this gives you a guide. And if you exclude these numbers, for example, if you assume that those who are undecided will break away the same way as the others are voting, then you're going to give MPP uh, about 65.8% on the day. This compares to 51.1 they scored last time. Pequodria drops from 40% to 19.5%. And this actually goes up compared to last time. They had 8.3 and they may get around 14% or more tomorrow. Now, this assumes that these voters who are not decided as at Saturday would break out the same in the same proportion right. as these guys. Just 40%. Yes. 40% and 19%. Yes, that. currently. If we exclude those who say they will not vote, because they won't come out to vote, so their numbers will not count in terms of the percentages. That pushes the uh, numbers up. And then we, we assume that 
those who are voting, those who are yet to vote, would decide to go this way. More will go for Enim, followed by Kukuduya uh, and, and this candidate. That will push the numbers slightly up above the polling numbers that we saw here. But if you eliminate these 5% people, yeah. and these guys are shared proportionately in this order, yeah. then the numbers you will get will be 65.8, 195 and 14.4. That assumes that they will break away and vote in the same way. If they break away and they go for Kukudia and uh, an NDC candidate, and people could drop below this 50, 55.8%. 65.8%. Now, our analysis shows that we will come to the, that place. Now, let's look at the party affiliation of who is voting for who. And that's, that's very key. In the case of MPP, 66% are voting for NS Enim. 4% are voting for Kusia Mankwa, NDC candidate. 16.7% are voting for Kokuduya, senior. 0.3% are voting for Kokuduya, junior. Undecided, 8.6% of MPP people said they are undecided. And 4.2% said they will not vote among MPP. If you come to NDC, 8.2% of NDC people are voting for MPP candidates. They are crossing carpet. 6, 7.3% are voting for their own candidate, Kosia Mankwa. 12.2% of NDC voters are voting for Kokuduya. And then none is voting for Kokuduya Jr. 8.2% said they are undecided. 14.1% said they will not vote. Now, look at the floating voters. 40% are voting for Enim of MPP. 16% are voting for NDC candidate Kosia Mankwa. 20.7% are voting for Kokudia Senior. And 2.3% are voting for Kokudia Junior. Yeah. 9.2% said they are undecided. And 11.5% said they will not vote. So this is the, the party affiliation of how these party members are voting for these candidates. So you can see that MPP is not able to max up their numbers. They are split. And so is NDC. They are split. Now, if NDC, NDC can outperform the poll, if they are able to convince their guys to vote for their own candidate and not to split to MPP and the independent candidate. And NDC, MPP can go up by convincing these guys who are voting for Kukuduya to come back home and vote for their own candidate. And also convince the rest who are saying undecided to come and vote for them in the end. So everything here would depend on turnout and who turns out to vote tomorrow. I like those people. Yes. Now let's look at <laughs> this number. It, it, it's telling. Now, for people who are voting for Enim Yeboa, um, uh, NS Enim, 53% of them believe Ghana is headed in the right direction. 46% believe Ghana is headed in the wrong direction. For those voting for Mankwa, 25% of them believe that Ghana is headed in the right direction. 72% believe it is headed in the wrong direction. Kukuduya, 33% said right direction. 62% said wrong direction. Kukuduya Jr., 33%, and 67%. Now look at this. Undecided, 4% think we are headed in the right direction. 96% said wrong direction. So if these guys are coming to vote tomorrow, they are unlikely to go MPP way yeah. because of the strong feeling that the country is headed in the wrong direction. Right. We believe that. After this analytics. And what's the percentage of the undecided? They are about 9%. No, 9%. 9% okay. overall. So if these guys decide to go either uh, Amankwa or Kukudia tomorrow, the final numbers for Amankwa and Kukudia will be far higher than the poll numbers are saying. There is strong indication that these guys may vote against MPP tomorrow. And those who said they will not vote, look, 86% said we are headed in the wrong direction. Wow. If they change their mind to come and vote tomorrow, it could add up the pressure on MPP candidate. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. MPP wants to do is to max up the numbers, have a very bragging right, a huge margin. These two groups could threaten that margin tomorrow if care is not taken. Then we looked at um, if they, under, okay, so if the, these guys who are undecided begins to move away and vote for MPP and, uh, sorry, the, the, the independent and NDC candidate, we could have these numbers tomorrow. 60% for MPP, plus or minus the margin of error, 
24% for Kokudia, 15% for Kosia Mankwa, and 1% for Kokudia Junior. So this could be likely the numbers we'll see tomorrow after the end of the polls, plus or minus the margin of error. Yeah. Now we ask them whether the development work the government is doing there overnight will have influence on who they vote for tomorrow. Look at it. 46% said they are unlikely to be influenced. They will not be influenced by that. Okay. Another 36% said yes, they will be influenced. And 18% said they will not be, they are indifferent. Yes, I mean, you, I am, I'm with the 36 group. Even yes. I don't, because, well, if it has to take by elections for you to develop my country, so be it. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's, it's why people are saying that, oh, then we'll go and finish our MP. Now, 36% <laughs> said they will be influenced yeah. by the projects. Yeah. Influence for or against, we can't tell here. We'll come back and see who is really voting for whom. Now, if you come here, among those who, okay, let's look at this. Those who are going to be influenced or not influenced, what is their level of education? For, for people who have junior high school, 39% said they will be influenced likely to vote for MPP because of the development project. 40% said unlikely. 21% said they are indifferent. When it comes to those with senior high, 35% said they, are, they will be influenced by the project. 50% said they will not be influenced. 14% said they are indifferent. Look at people with education, I mean, degrees or tertiary. 38% said they will be influenced. They are the same as those with junior high school. 41% said they will not be influenced. 21% said uh, they are indifferent. Those without education, 41% said yes, they will be influenced. Those without education? Yes. Compared to 31% who said they will not be influenced. 28% said they are indifferent. Now, look at this. Then we found out those who are going to be influenced, who are they voting for? Look at it. Enim Yabua, 55%. Some of the back is not there. Okay. Uh, is it this one? This one. Let me just take it. Okay. Okay. When we analyzed, it was showing that 55% of voters who said they will be influenced were voting for Enim Yabua. And those who said they were not going to be influenced were still voting for Enim, uh, Enim uh, NSA Enim. So he was getting support from those who will be influenced and, NSA and those who will not be influenced. So he's getting benefit of that. So overall, about 23% of voters will be voting for the MPP because of the project. The project. Yes. And that is quite a huge sample be able to, and that could sway the election in a very significant way. Now, we also tested whether there's a belief so, that the so former MP... So sometimes we think that these last minute projects, you know, don't really do anything, but... You it, see, it, in some constituencies, it will work. Okay. In other constituencies, it will, be, it will backfire. Does it depend on the, dem, the demographic... Uh, I, I think it depends. Look, if you do it in a Shanti region, Shanti region... The influence a, of the political party. parties. Okay. If you go to a swing region, Greater Accra, Central region, Western region, the response will be different. Now, we asked them whether they were of the view that the former MP was poorly treated or unfairly treated by the government when he was alive. Only 26% agreed that he was fairly, uh, unfairly treated. 62% said no, they don't think he was uh, treated unfairly. And 12% did not have opinion on that issue. So basically, there was no truth. Most people don't believe that he was treated badly that he by was the government. Badly. Yes. You didn't find out if they know or they don't know? Um, I think they, see, the MP had his issues with the constituents. Yeah. No doubt about that. And that we saw in July, poll. And clearly, it made him unpopular, but nobody knew. But nobody had done survey at the time until we went there. And now we can see the difference between him and the new candidate. Okay, this is additional information that I think. Uh, okay. So basically, that is what, this is what is happening in Kumu.
The, go back to that last but one sec. Okay, government treated. Here, we are looking at those who said uh, government treated the, the MP badly okay. or, and who they were voting for in the candidates. In terms of Enum Yabua, 55% of people who agreed that the MP was treated badly were voting for him. And 64% of people who said they disagree still voting for him. In the case of Amankwa, 9%. And so basically, it is not an election issue in Humo at this stage. So, well, um, the overriding conclusion is that the poll is likely going into the direction of the NPP. Absolutely. Yes, but okay, so if you look at um, the, the uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, the campaign activities and the comments that are being made, what exactly, since you have gone on the ground? Why were they panicking? Yeah, why is the stronghold, you know, seem you know, to be panicking? Let's look at the drivers for what happened in 2020. There was an issue between the former MP and the current uh, independent party, independent candidate, Kukudia. Kukudia. And that tension similarly took it through the election. It was close. But once the former MP was no longer in the equation, the fundamental of the race would change. changed. Okay. So the, his special assistant who is now, you know, uh, running for uh, the party... His factors are different. They are different. And you have a different candidate in the person of uh, Ernest Yao Enim. So Enim may not have inherited the enemies Baswa had. So it's a different candidate as far as we are concerned. And then secondly, you have 23% of voters saying that they are being influenced by the work that has been done overnight. Because if you don't probably vote for them and you, they lose, you don't get the work continued. But you see, what we pick up, yeah, mm. it, or what we picked up is that uh, Basua was in the Alan camp, and not. I'm not sure if you picked that, but Basua <laughs> was in the but, Alan camp and not see, in the Baumia camp. That is and in move. this current one, the current candidate was also in the Alan camp, which yes. Dr. Baumia is reported to have even campaigned against him. him. But after he won, he had no choice but to come, and you know, L look. The stakes are high for MPP. If they should, by any chance, lose that seat, that would be the end of them in parliament. So both Alan, Baumia, and the president had a common goal to remain majority or at least 37%, or 137, 137, whatever happens in, 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 in uh, Asenov. So they couldn't afford to lose Kumewu, come what may. So you see Alan on the same campaign trail, Baumi on the same campaign trail, Nando on the same campaign trail, you will never have this for any MP anywhere else. So he enjoyed that kind of unity of purpose within MPP. Mm -hmm. and there's no doubt this would translate into, into margins. So you have these three key reasons underpinning the race. And that means that the reasons why people went for Kukuduya in 2020 most of those reasons don't exist anymore. So you see that his support will drop significantly because of that. The common enemy is no longer in the fight. There's a new person in the race who hasn't inherited your enemies. So the fight is completely different. Why well, we advise you not to inherit your enemies. Not the best. And, I mean, and, and, don't inherit the enemies of your friends. You get, uh, it's not necessary. I mean, I was quite surprised that all the big guns were there. For me, I was surprised. Even though yes, the stakes are high. The whole machinery. Yes, yes. I, I was really surprised. I mean, I, there are some things I, can, I cannot say, but I can tell you that the MPP has been on the ground for as long as, as long as over a month. And that surprised me. That, that's your stronghold. You know, yeah, like, it, it, it means they had a that. feeling something wasn't right. You know, and probably, I don't know what uh, information they had or what the data they had that was pointing to some problem. But clearly from what they have seen, from what we've seen, they may have sensed a big danger. But from what we have seen in the poll and from our side, the danger hasn't manifested. Maybe it was there before, maybe now that before we went there, the grounds have changed in their favor. We can't tell because we weren't there for a bit of time now, for some time now.
Um, let, let me take a quick break. I'll come back and wrap up with you uh, pretty shortly. But we'll, we'll, we will uh, see what will happen in Kumau tomorrow. Are we doing... Um, okay, let me go and come back. I'll ask you the question. I'll be back shortly. Welcome back to uh, Good Afternoon, Ghana. So we're still... Uh, on, we're wrapping up pretty shortly, but we're still <sighs> on Kumu, uh, as um, Mr. Musa has just, you know, giving us the analysis of the polls conducted in the area, and it is clearly going into the direction or tilting into the direction of the NPP. If this thing doesn't work, if it changes tomorrow, what would that mean? I understand that polls are based on people's views at a point in time. Between Saturday and today, you've mentioned that somebody has made a statement that says that with ask for MPP, just T-shirt, and they, this could have consequences. This was made after we went to the area to poll. How will this impact on people who were objectively assessing the situation? It could backfire. So as far as people can have still chance to change their mind between when we last spoke to them and election day, Anything can happen. But this will give you a guide. Whatever happens, it will still be within a margin of error. It has to take a very tsunami change for these numbers to change significantly. Yeah, but the margin of error is what? 1.1%. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. 4. Yes. So the maximum we, we could see for uh, under this scenario would be around 64% for MPP. A maximum for this could be 28, and this one comes down. So whoever gains, then the other one will be affected. I really want us to do the analysis after the results come out. Sure, uh, we'll do that. You know, we'll um, do that. After tomorrow. We, we, we will be here to do that, definitely. Because the dynamics in the campaign this time is very different. I don't know. It, you know, by elections sometimes really come with a lot of controversies and different dynamics and factors. See, usually, by elections are opportunity for the voters to really punish the government as a warning yeah. for them that, look, if you don't sit up, we're going to really punish you. So we use by election to, to, to really gorge the feeling of the people. But in Ashanti region, let, let's see what Kusem and Kwas number will be. That will tell us something. Yeah. Because if NDC overperformed their 2020 numbers, it could tell you something will happen. Which in, they themselves have complained that it was so bad yes. that they had to change the candidates. So if that number improves, it could tell you what could be happening elsewhere in Ashanti region. Are we going to um, Asin North soon? Yes, definitely we are planning to go to Asin North. Or we, we don't want to rush there without a candidate's name. So we're waiting for MPP to pick a candidate, then we'll officially confirm the NDC candidate. Then we can go there with these two names. Then we'll come back with numbers before the elections. Um, so this one says that it is rather sad we cannot decide who leads as based on the performance, but rather on party affiliation. Kumeu could be a clear demonstration of the feeling of the Ghanaian people, but to all your, pool, your polls, nothing will change whether someone is taking us for a ride or not. Ghana is late mentally than infrastructure. I mean... Yeah, it, it will take a couple of election cycles for this to begin to really see through. But we have seen some trend currently in Ashanti region. We are seeing Ashanti as having one of the regions with the highest number of floating voters. It was not like this before, but that is happening in, in, in Ashanti. Ashanti. Yeah, but, I, but it means that it, change will come, but, but slowly. it is slow. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, I'm Kobe, Kobe from Bowie. He says that kindly refute the analysis made by this Global Info Analytics. Um, they, they used, he said they used enumerators to their advantage. Is that doesn't make sense. What, what do you mean? It doesn't make sense. Okay, they always uh, cheat en enumerators when it comes to the release of money to, en to uh, enumerators who go to the field yeah, look, and collect we, the data for them. We, we, we have people who share in our belief. We train them. And we can tell when they are lying. So we don't like those who give money for people to go and do things for them. We are different. That's why our numbers have been always right on the, on, okay. on the dead years. 
Kobe from Bawe, I, you know, I, will, I could have even read your message on, but you use words that I have a guest in the studio. You don't expect me to abuse again. That's not fair. So when you really want to test honesty, please just put your analysis straight without any attacks. Else okay. I will not read it, I promise you. So, um, you see, some of them, when the numbers don't go their way, they get, they they get, get too emotional. They get too attack. They get too emotional. Regardless where you're numbers. coming from, other MPB and DC, if you use any... Uh, you know, words I cannot read. I will not read them. Annie, good afternoon to you. The constant rant by the Ekufuado uh, that he will hand over uh, power to the MPP means that 2024 is not going to be free and fair. So this could be a wake-up call for the NDC to start thinking outside the box to uh, avert dubious defeats for Malhachi. Haruna, there. Um, my time is up. I, I cannot read anymore, but let me just pause here. Last words before I, I, I go. Um, the last word is that uh, tomorrow we'll look at what is going to happen in, uh, in um, Kumau. And from tomorrow, we'll be heading to Asin North. And believe me, we'll get you nothing but the best. I thank you. I'm grateful that all the time we call on you coming to the studio. Musa uh, Dankwa is the executive director for Global Info, Info Analytics. Also, earlier on, Abdul Basit Suleiman came through. Uh, from the uh, Ashanti region, that's Kumewu to be precise, and, and told us exactly what's going on there. So we'll be showing you, we'll bring you videos and pictures of how the by-election will go. Please stick with Metro TV. My name is Ania Fompofo. Thanks for watching. <laughs>